of consuming uh, bottled water, you know, that bottled water, that you might want to have a rethink if all of this research thing is all uh, something we should go, go by. Research conducted by some scientists from the University of Connecticut disclosed that uh, cons uh, consumption of bottled water and other items stored in plastics can cause male infertility. Now, according to the research, male fertility is on a decline as men today produce fewer uh, sperm than in the past and the, and the sperm are less healthy. A Nigerian doctor who shares this theory, Dr. Rashid Abbas, joins us now right here in the studio to make sense of all of this. Dr. Abbas, good morning. Good morning. And good it's to good to see you. See, good to see you too. Okay, okay so um, when this topic came and everyone was asking, oh, really? Because well, drinking water in the bottle has become part of our lives on a daily basis. So how did this theory come why is this discovery now and how is this going to work you know <laughs> there are so many questions because a lot of people are interested in fact, when, when this when this topic was promoted we saw the reaction on social media and they're waiting to get to know what this is all about so let's start somewhere talk to us about this research actually thank you so much for the opportunity so let's let's take a step back and say how did we get here mm. I grew up in the 60s and 70s. We used to have access to public water. Mm. And now all of a sudden, you know, from there, my transition into the study of sciences and everything like that, I did my medical training at Yale. And now we realize that lack of public water, the one we used to drink just mm -hmm. from public tap, mm -hmm. is actually depriving us of vital trace elements, we call them. These are things like zinc, fluoride, selenide. So now I start practicing. I've been in the practice of men's health now for about 19 years. And what we focus on is just how a man's body work. So now it comes to the issue of fertility. In this part of the world, we used to think fertility is usually a woman's problem. But now the data tells us it's about 40, 45% men. And so where do we go? Let's analyze the sperm. The semen that a man makes, as we all sit here now, we don't have the sperm in our body. We make it on demand when we are with our ladies, our partners. And the analysis now shows that most men are on the decline in terms of production. And but most importantly, one of the elements of the trace elements is called zinc, which you and I only get from the public water. All the bottled water we're drinking, they're pure, but they do not have any supplements in them. There is no fluoride, there is no zinc, there is no calcium, and all these are needed for full development of any man. So in order for you to be a father, especially if you're growing up now, you need to make sure you get all these supplements and you're not going to get them from bottled water. Mm. So wow. tell us about zinc. Yes. So zinc is one of those vital elements that we need. Actually, the main function is in our immune system. Mm. But when we go back to the male genital tract, there is one little organ that we all talk about in men's health called the prostate. Mm. So when I make my semen, which is coming from my testicle, it needs to be transported to the prostate. The prostate will have fructose mm. and zinc. The zinc is essential for the sperm motility. Mm. If I make enough sperm and my sperm is not moving, it's not going to find the woman's egg and there will mm. be no pregnancy. Mm. So in men's health, zinc is extremely vital. So, so what does the zinc do there? Is the zinc, is the, zinc the power of, you know, what, what, tell me the relationship between zinc and the spermatozoa. Good, about. good. So spermatogenesis is something we make on demand, like you are in the other room and you are getting ready. Mm. Your prostate, as that little organ, the only thing it does for us is production. So when the semen is produced from the testicle, where the testosterone, that's our own body fuel, gets mixed up together, and you must be well hydrated, by the way. If you're not well hydrated, you're not going to make a lot. Mm -hmm. So once you make all that, it gets into the prostate. Prostate will give it energy mm -hmm. through the fructose. That's the sugar. Mm -hmm. And now zinc is what affects motility. There's something called mitochondria. Mm -hmm. It needs to have that with the cilia. So if the zinc is missing, the sperm is there, but it's not moving. Mm. So the actual motility it's chemical the work of zinc. is the work of zinc. No, now mm. tell us, um, how come that the bottled water doesn't have zinc? Mm. <sighs> That's the 800, the, the big gorilla in the room, <laughs> because it's a question of the healthcare government demanding that. The producers of bottled water, they're business people. They've met the bare minimum. The bare minimum is produce pure water. Yes, all the bottled water are pure, but they need to do a step ahead of that. That's where public health comes into play. Because when you have things like fluoride, you are allowing little grown-up babies 
to have good teeth mm. because fluoride is needed for that. Mm. When you give them zinc, you are preparing in order to have a new generation. But they're not doing that because it's going to cost them money. And so our government needs to step up and make it a requirement that, yes, you've met the bare minimum of producing pure water because all the bottled water are pure. But you will not see on their content any addition of supplements. Mm. That will come at the cost to them. All right. So, uh, so, so uh, sorry, can, yes. say, can the government therefore insist that you must have zinc in this? But what does it cost the businessman who makes the water to put zinc in the water? Actually, it's a simple process, and we're not asking them to go for a new research. This research is abundantly out there. We're just talking about cut and paste. But to any businessman, they want to spend the bare minimum to maximize profit. So our government needs to step up as an healthcare requirement and say no. We've accepted the pure water for so long, but now we're seeing the effect. Research is proving it. Let's add all these supplements. It's going to come at a cost, but yet there has to be a corporate social responsibility from our business people also to contribute. All right. In, in this zinc that is very vital here, uh, apart from water, we can't get zinc from any, anywhere else? Actually, you know, to every problem, there has to be a solution. Okay. You can get zinc from your multivitamins. Okay. So I tell some of my patients after seeing them that, look, okay, I'm not going to stop you from drinking your bottled water, but now it's time for you to get on a complete multivitamin that has adequate zinc requirement in it, right? Because when we see immense health, yes, the low spam and the spam motility is a concern to us, but we have other issues to deal with, you know, like infection and all that. So we face that, and then we now make appropriate recommendations. Get on supplements. So don't leave the supplements until your old age. It's time for you to get on a multi, you know, multivitamin daily, and that will help. Mm. That's interesting. The, the environment in which we live in yes. is actually different from the environment in the past where we all went to tap and mm -hmm. drink water. <laughs> I, but, but today, people, <laughs> people who use bottled water and the other one we call pure, pure water. water. Is that one really the pure <laughs> one now? Yeah? Well, there's a place in the Bible who says, your eyes are too pure to look up. <laughs> that was, you, know, was, you are too pure for my good. <laughs> <laughs> so what is going on? Is it purity is not a sin? <laughs> I think it's a it's a matter of us demanding mm -hmm. because you know let's no, is the pure water is yes. it really better than the bottled water? No, the bottled water has been shown to be better than the pure water because we live in an environment where everybody has bore oil. And yeah. there have been some reports that some of these pure water are coming from bore oil. Yes. The the bottled water have a little bit of requirement to meet up the NAPDAC requirement and all that. So, yes. No, in terms of fertility, I'm talking about no, pure no. water. The, the, the because water. it comes from pure, pure, pure from bore. Exactly. And so it doesn't have all the, all the chemicalization that, uh, that the bottle that, water. That kills the zinc, that mm. makes it pure. Pure, exactly. <laughs> the, the, the problem with the pure water also is, you know, from location to location, the mm. sediment of your borehole is different. If I make a borehole here, mm. compared to if I go to the island, it's we're different. not going to get the same chemical composition. Mm. And so we need a good regulation. If not, if we leave this to the business people, we are not. How, how do we begin to take this regulation thing to another level where we become more serious? Because now there's a new consciousness amongst people where, because I took a bottle of water as the, oh, so we've been drinking this and then we're not getting the right thing from this, apart from just the satisfaction. Oh, oh yeah, I've just quenched my thirst. Talk to us from how to get government on board. So we all need to be educated consumers. And when we're educated consumers, we have the information now. It's about what do we do with it. Election is coming. It's time we talk to our elected officers that, look, this is what we need. They have an healthcare committee, obviously, and they have think tanks to further verify the research and say, look, then let's look at the data. A lot of these Western countries that even have access to better water, why are their fertility rates going down? We have the answers to that. They choose to have less and less children. So they accept, it, they accept that this thing has no zinc, yes. and we don't even care for zinc, we, exactly. because we're in sync with it. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the more we know, the better we should have. Yeah. So now we have the information, and then it's time for us to go to the front with it and let our elected officers know that we can actually make changes to this. The consumers are there. We're a huge market. Almost every Nigerian I know drink bottled water. Mm. I do. And so now to let them know that, hey, all it takes is additional pennies on it for you to supplement. We need calcium, we need zinc, we need, you know, selenide on it because this helps, especially for men. For, for the um, 
like in the United States or in the Western world, where they have better understanding of these things, do their waters have zinc? Yes, absolutely. So for is it the, regulated by government? It's regulated by the FDA, the so, food and drug. To put zinc there. To put zinc in there. Not only the zinc, the selenide, the fluoride, mm. it's mandated. And so when you go to the store, you see the ones that doesn't have that, they're slightly cheaper, and there's a disclaimer, and you see the ones that do. You might need to pay 20 more cents on that. But you know, you are making that conscious decision. that Okay, oh, I'm no longer in the business of making babies, I can buy this. Mm. Or I can't afford it, I'll buy this. But, but, but um, looking at Nigerian diet, yes. the, is, there, is there also the possibility that our diet is complementing mm, the, the, the lack absence of zinc, of zinc in what you maybe when you eat your amala and beggary, you have enough <laughs> zinc to, to offset the lack of zinc in the, in in the, the water. bottled water? Good. That's an excellent question because we were looking into that and saying, you, you know, if we're short here, is there other places where mm, we can make it right, up? Yeah. But the issue is water is essential for life, believe it or not, compared to you and I eating. So more people actually feel the thirst to drink. And because we're in this part of the world, under the equator, that we feel thirsty, mm -hmm. we sweat more, we have to drink more. So there are other foods. There are even some natural herbs, the regular cloves that will help you, the ginger, the garlic that will help you. But there is nothing that will meet up the level of amount of water you need to consume. Mm -hmm. Because your semen production depends on how well hydrated you are, not how much amola is in your body. It has to be the fluid content. Mm -hmm. And so we still want to push the essence of, you know, adding supplements to the bottled water. So we are, we are a race of baby killers. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are committing, uh, what do you call it, infanticide. We, without, uh, without knowing. And the great, without the great state, we are committing yeah. crime against, we, we, without against knowing. the coming without generation. Knowing. Honestly, honestly. And we're going to pay a price for that. Because if we're not making up, it's going to get to the point where we're not going to have enough population to generate tax. All right. Now, apart from the issue of making babies, yes. right, Let, let's talk about the health of the baby that we're making, in fact. Absolutely. Does, it, does it have an impact there, too? Absolutely. So when we talk about semen production, which is the spermatogenesis, when we analyze them in our clinics, we're looking at three modalities. How much is a man making in each ejaculation? How many of that is well-formed? When you and I don't have enough of this supplement, mm -hmm. you are not going to make well-formed semen welcome spam. And if that is able to move enough to get into the egg, the baby is not going to be as you and I want. So um, it's a bigger problem. Uh, what, uh, how, how do you recommend a, a policy on this matter? Because, because, because you are going to, this matter is not, it's not just a matter for um, yes. NAFDAQ or it's yes. for federal government, it's for the business community, yes. it's for profit and so on. Uh, is it possible for us to say, okay, to solve this matter, we have to get, uh, uh, get back to reticulated water and so on? That's also at a great cost. It's, it's at a great cost, and that's a big infrastructure development mm -hmm. that is going, you know, especially the, when the we have... Infrastructure for babies. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, need, we need to let our elected officials see how important this is, mm -hmm. and even for short-term and long-term issues. Mm -hmm. So we have to make water a priority. When we make that a priority and we're educated consumers and we can go to our elected officials and mm -hmm. say, look, this is what's going on, because after all, most of them are men, they are fathers, grandfathers, and they'll be expecting more babies. 